Thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got the interesting Ife Omai with me. Hello. How are you doing? Well, how are you? I'm Excited good. Excited about Friday? Um, yes, I know. You're getting there? I'm getting there. Mm. I'm sure I'll get there mm -hmm. in less than um, 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to the main story. Flaunting my world inspires people. And this is coming from Dividu. He says, we are not here to rub it in anybody's face. We're here to motivate or to show motivation. Many kids write to me and tell me that I'm the reason they want to finish school and projects and become successful. In America, there are people who think we live in huts. Sometimes I feel like I want to show them we're living the life. Um, he's going crazy, you feel him? <laughs> it has nothing to do with showing off or trying to oppress anybody. They oppress us enough. And of course, and this is coming from David Doe. It's interesting that he was, should I say, trying to defend his lifestyle his in, mm. a, in a deep way. Because yeah. I, I did not expect him bringing in America and how did some of them they think that we live in huts yeah. and um, some even think we look like monkeys, mm. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have to agree. I mean, is that, ev is that mm, how do I say this? Is it every time that David posts wealth that he has this in mind? I don't personally think so. I think that some days my guy just wants to flex, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But um, it's good to see that he isn't just flexing. He actually has an intention with his flex. Um, he's he's always been a rich kid, and I don't think there's anything wrong with. He can't he can't change that. That's just how life works. So he's allowed to show his his work, and he's also a very hardworking guy. So mm -hmm. if he's getting his millions and he's been able to like bag all those luxury items that we everybody wishes for, why the heck not? I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it. Um, if I, I think I'll have had a problem with David Flex if, let's say, we didn't know his source of income. But we see him in the studio 247. It's all, always about music. He's been giving us steady music from day one. Um, so he's put a lot of hard work into it. So I think that's a type, I, I don't mind that type of flex or young people digesting his type of um, flex on social media because they can see that he works just as hard. So, personally, when you see anyone flexing online, does it inspire you in any way? No. <laughs> okay. It doesn't really inspire me because it's too, it's one of those things where you can't really put your life into that person's shoes. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe if I know the person personally and I feel like what they're capable of doing, I'm capable of doing, we're giving the same resources, same life, and then they're not doing more, like, okay, okay, you need to wake up because people are making more money. But um, you have to, be to, I have to learn how to cut my coat according to my size. There's some things that I've done in life that my mates probably would, I haven't been able to achieve and I pat myself on the back for that. But there's also, also some things vice versa. Definitely. So I don't really feel necessarily inspired. I just think, and I'm not really, I think for this job, I'm really not that like glammy and makeup y. And so social media doesn't really inspire me. I think it comes when it comes to things like family, how good you are as a person, your friends, you know, the quality of your life. That's yeah, I what think, really I think does when it comes me. to social media, we can all just feed off each other's energy, so one way or the other. It's yeah. not necessarily about inspiring in the sense mm. of inspiring, because I've maybe for younger generations and maybe those that really hold on to David Do strongly yeah. to say, okay, and I know they can inspire your look and say, okay, if you mix this and mix that, it makes sense. You yeah. can look good, but. In the real sense of, of inspiring, yeah, like you said, if I'm in your shoes and I'm giving the um, advantages and also disadvantages you have, then maybe we can say, how did you do it and how mm. would that affect me personally? But just a fan of the video, well, you look good. And sometimes, I mean, his dressing doesn't inspire me. I think he's beginning to mm. dress more matured now that he he's waving the married man flag, right? Mm. I think he, he looks more better, but I'm not a, a fan of all the saggy yeah, jean and bling. plenty blinks. I'm, no, I'm not a fan. I, I prefer subtle. Everything has to be subtle for me. You yeah. can have a neck piece on as a guy, but it has to be subtle. Like, right. that's what... Does it for you. Does it for me. Yeah. That's the word. <laughs> all right, moving on to the next story. Two-Face regrets not doing much for Dami Crane at Hypertech. Dami Crane shared a screenshot of um, the DM he received from Tubaba where he wrote, um, and I quote, Dami, you know, I tell people that I did not do much for you because you made yourself. You have a good charisma and you are so alive with your movement. I wish I did not have all the legal 
things um, when you were in hypertech. And of course, Dami responded saying he will continue to celebrate to Baba that his messages inspires him to do more. Mm. Um, off the back of that, there was also another response from a family member from what the person wrote, that's it on the screen. Um, this person is supposed to be Dami Crane's mother's sister. And he was saying that, so she, I don't know, was saying that, um, okay, they added it there, a family rep, to make you know that this is a statement from the family, that whoever is behind that was personally thinking, personally had a beef with Tubaba for right. coming to the family, um, encouraging them to let um, Dami Queen go out there, and then it suddenly felt like you let the young boy make so many decisions for himself, and then um, just do things on his own. And mm. she is saying that she's um, happy that he's doing this now, but that there, there, there's still time and room to make amendments. So, yeah, I think I, I get where they're coming from. Yeah, yeah, same. Uh, it's it's such a a deep thing. Mm -hmm. I think you can look at it and and say this is somebody's life that they have placed in your hands, like, made me think, wow, what could Dami Crane have been like to Nigeria, to Africa, to the world, mm. if... Um, he had better management. <clears throat> yeah, if he had better management. I mean, it's funny because this week we've been talking a lot about, you know, artists and record deal labels and, you know, and it, 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 it's kind of like that mentor and mentee relationship. And it's so important having someone who's really got your back. So this story was really sad to me that Dami Crane didn't have that. I'm not saying that if Tufus was in his life, it would be bigger than now, but it just makes me wonder because so far the music that I remember of him wasn't actually bad. So um, now I, I appreciate the, the sympathy, but like remember I say, sorry, cannot fix this issue. Mm. So... Um, I don't know. But I, I like that he, he is matured enough to know that he's supposed to do this. And he said this message has helped him um, know that he's supposed to work harder to inspire more people. However, I also want to look at it from what we see in the industry right now, where any little trouble with an artist and the management, they go their separate ways and then you realize that there's a new record label. It's kind of like church. And the boss, everybody is the boss. Like, is mm. it, 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 what does it take to own a record label? Is mm. it just about um, being an artist and yeah. having been able to be in the studio and put out good music? What exactly does it take? That's what comes to mind for me. And mm. to discuss that, um, we have a veteran on the phone with us to have this conversation. He is Dayo Adeneye, popularly known as um, D1. You know, you yeah. don't really call <laughs> Keke without calling yeah. D1. So um, he and Keke were in charge or, yeah, were in charge of Kenny's music, music when Kenny's time. music yeah. was the big deal. Yeah. I think they are still the big yeah. deal and they put in a lot of work to make sure that the industry is what it is today. Yeah. So, hello, Mr. Adeneye. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the show this morning. My pleasure. Okay. Um, as someone who has been in the industry for a very long time, who understands the business of um, record label and managing an artist, and looking at what we have now, a case of almost every artist having a record label to themselves, do you think this um, is healthy for the environment? Um, it depends on what you mean by do I think it's healthy. I mean, it's, it's relative. Um, but I think the question should be, is it in the best interest of the artist? Um, if you ask me, then I'll say no. Um, what people don't understand, especially musicians and artists, is that there's a business model to this. It's called show business. There's a show side of it, and there's a business side of it. And you have to understand that this applies to any business you're doing. Uh, let's say you want to build a house now. An architect draws the plan for you, right? Then you give it to a quantity surveyor who will tell you you're going to need so many bags of cement, so many by uh, quantity of blocks. You will need this and that and that. So that's what you call division of labor. Are you with me? Yes. Sir. Even let's move away from that. Let's say okay, you work in a bank. The MD has his, his duties. The branch manager has his duties. The clerks, um, the bank tellers. So when you apply that to the entertainment or music business, you as an artist, you are the product. So you can't be your own publicist. You can't be your own producer, the songwriter. You promote yourself and you want to own the record. Yes, there's nothing wrong with aspiring to own a record label. But when you do all these things, it doesn't free you 
to attend to your creative side. So something is going to suffer definitely. So that's my opinion on that. Just to build on that, sir, um, for someone who is in a similar situation to Dami Crane, for example, what do you think is the best way forward? Do they try and revamp the relationship they had with the current you know, record label that didn't give them sufficient time? Or do they go find something else? Because we have on our tables here somebody who has obviously come out to say, I'm sorry for not being able to be that person for you. So do, we, do you advise that they keep to that, to that relationship, or do they just move on? Well, I can't speak specifically to anybody's situation. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's the person that wears the shoes that knows where it's pinching. Um, if a relationship is not, you think it's not beneficial or it's not healthy for you, yes, you have a right to move on. But the key is, you, most of usually end up jumping from the frying pan into the fire. So, um, without being specific to any particular artist, uh, I mean, you look, you look at the trend. Most that leave their record labels, they always, it's a, it's a downward spiral from then on. Because you've moved away from an established template and you're on your way down. That's not to say some don't come out of it and succeed. But look, if we are to look at this template where it, where it, uh, it succeeds in other climes, whether it's the UK or the US, look, a, a successful artist, Name maybe it Michael Jackson, be it Prince or Maria Carey, they will have a they will hire a publicist, they will hire a management, and that's why you see whenever they're successful, maybe they are collecting an award, the Grammy or Oscar. The first person they say, okay, well they thank Almighty God, they thank their parents, but of course they thank who? Their management, because well, you see that's the problem with our climb. We we always see things as uh, it's my money, it's my money, so nobody else should benefit from it. Forgetting that other people have a part to play in your success. You didn't become a big artist overnight. A record label promoted you, recorded you, shot your videos, promoted those videos, promoted your work, set you up for good shows, and put you on platforms where your work can be exposed. But once our artists become successful, they start thinking, oh, the record label is ripping me off. And why are they taking 20% of my money? Why are they taking 30% of my money? But I put it simply, and this is what I always maintain. Look, it's better for you to make $100 million a year and pay your management, your publicist, and maybe 20, 25% of $100 million than for you to say you are doing everything yourself and make 20, 30 million a year. That's just what it boils down to. Okay, speaking from experience before you go, what would you want to advise up and coming artists right now and even artists that have blown, using the term they normally use, um, in, in regards to how they manage their relationship with their record label and the management and every publicist around them? My advice simply would be stick to what you know, stick to what you do best. If you are not a publicist, don't try to do the work of a public. You're an artist, you're a songwriter, you are a singer, you are a rapper, stick to what you know best. Then hire the best hands to handle other areas for you. Then step back and let them do their work. Sometimes they might not look as if they are doing much to you, but if they are succeeding in keeping you out of trouble, they are booking successful shows for you, your name continues to remain in the limelight, then let your management, let your record label, let them do what they need to do. Don't listen to the people. I mean, you, you, you know, once you're successful, people will come around. You're the uncles, the, they will come. The aunties, the friends, they'll say, ah, you know, why are you letting this record label do this? Why are you letting your management take your money? You forget that three years ago or two years ago, this same record label, you went there begging and begging them to sign you. But now that you become an established name, it's now, oh, it's my money. You now let other friends, other influences, outside influences, and that's usually what happens. Outside influences, these artists start listening to people who were not responsible for their success. And of course, usually, I mean, you look at it, it's, it's there. The records are there. You name, I don't want to name any artists, but you see, once they leave their record label, they leave that established platform, it's downwards from there. Yes, there are exceptions to the rule, maybe one or two that manage to stay afloat, but usually it doesn't last long. All right, thank you so much for thank your time, you. Mr. Dinner. Thank you for having me. Okay, so...
I guess he's spoken from yeah. his own personal experience and how it has happened. And truly, when you look at um, those that have left the liberals who would um, term as established mm. in this part of the world, it's, it has never been the same. Yeah. There's, there's a difference yeah. regarding where they used to be and um, where they are now. It doesn't mean they are no longer players in the industry, mm. but the, at what level are they playing, yeah. you know? So... I, I think I understand yeah. exactly where it's coming I, I, from. What I really took from this conversation is one, sentiment can be your problem. So if you start feeling like, oh, I've blown and then personal influences from other people are coming. And second thing is like, which is better, the enemy you know or the angel you don't know? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what people need to start considering before they make decisions in terms of switching or any of that type of stuff. But it was insightful, so thank, thank him for that. Okay, moving on to the next story. Don't marry a career lady and force her to stay at home. You fail and bros. Women deserve to be successful and achieve their dreams too. If you don't want your wife to work or do business, simply marry the one that does not want to do anything. You will have a great life together. This is coming from um, an mm. actor, a politician, mm -hmm. soon to become a pastor. You Motivational speaker, <laughs> Twitter influencer. Man, I don't know anymore. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah. Spot on, I mm -hmm. would say. Very spot on. I rarely ever agree with what this man has to say. But this one, for me, does it. It's very simple and straightforward. Your values have to align for whatever relationship it is that you're actually doing. It could be friends, roommates, lovers, couples. Um, in this case, husband and wife. So, of course, you have to have that aligned. Um, I, and I hope that Nigerian men can take that into consideration as well. I sincerely hope they do because this is something that happens almost all the time. Yeah. They come to your work environment and see they do working, growing her career, doing her job, say, oh, I want to marry you. And they do the whole lovey-dovey-dovey and it ends the marriage. And the next thing you hear is, you have to stay home, take care of the house. Mm. You have to take care of the children. Yeah. Da, da, da. There are things, or even when the lady comes up with solutions, more like getting a nanny, getting mm. a cook, doing things. And I mean, she's working. She should be able to also help out in, in sourcing those bills. But no, my wife cannot work. But you, you saw her working. Yeah. So I, I think, like you rightly said, values has to align. Yeah. And if you want someone who is willing to be a housewife, which requires a lot of work as well, yeah. just not to downplay yeah, that. Course. It takes a lot of work to be able to do that Running as well. Home, yeah. If that is what you want, then find someone. Because trust me, I have met women who would say, mm. my aim in life is once I'm done with my be NYSC, I want to get married and take care of my home. And of it course. is absolutely valid. So just find yeah. someone who aligns with what you want and what you think works for you and yeah. your mental space. I think it's also be good, based on what you've just said, to also have that conversation about marriage. So there's a lot of men that don't mind you working, but when it comes to now having kids in the mix, some people have stronger values on that. So it's good to talk about that before you get there. And it's okay to also change your mind. Like right now, I don't think I'll ever be a housewife, but I don't know the type of kids I will get, what their needs will be if I'm going to have kids. So when that time comes, you should also be able to put that into consideration for, your, for you and your spouse to have that type of conversation for change that okay I might actually want to stay at home and homeschool for example mm -hmm. or whatever or I actually don't mind first year after baby going back to work so just have somebody that you can talk to someone that's not very difficult because all I just vibe is a lot of men here can be super difficult and impose their beliefs or their cultures or what makes them feel better because mm -hmm. it isn't really always about them caring for the wife that they don't want them to work. It just looks good on the man to say that my wife doesn't work, I take care of her. <laughs> so please, just, you know, have that dialogue. It's important. Mm, and even when it comes to um, taking care of the children or taking care of the baby, sometimes their, their opinions or resolve doesn't come from finding the best thing that was for those yeah. two is just from a a place of years of orientation so yeah. you you leave the around people who told you that if this happens to the child it's there is no um, um scientific backing yeah, yeah. nothing you just believe that because they said this my wife must carry my child like this for my and child to must. be mm. reasonable in life mm -hmm. you know and i think we should be able to learn and unlearn like yeah. be able to say okay you know what this doesn't work and also allow people to challenge your beliefs. But please don't start challenging inside the marriage. Ch yeah. Chat it before the marriage yeah. and create room for, like you said, being able to modify uh, your yeah. stance yeah. before you get into the marriage. Uh, this is my personal opinion, basically. Of course. Mm. 
Okay, that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and do watch this conversation all over again by visiting our YouTube channel and also subscribing at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. Thank you as always goes to my co-anchor Ife Mine. Thank you for being here you. and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay with us. Thank you.